Under heavy security, convicted murderess Gertrude Banaszewski appeared before the Indiana Parole Board and asked to be released from prison after 20 years behind bars. I'm just asking for mercy, nothing else. Banaszewski was convicted of the 1965 brutal torture and slaying of a neighbor's child, 16-year-old Sylvia Likens. The girl was bludgeoned, scalded, tattooed, and starved by Banaszewski and her children while she lived in their home. Banaszewski was sent to prison for life. Banaszewski's request for an early parole from prison outraged victims' rights groups throughout the community who said she should never have a second chance. But in September, the parole board voted to give her that chance. Then protesters collected 40,000 signatures objecting to her release and staged a memorial funeral procession to Sylvia Likens' grave. The wave of protests persuaded a judge to vacate the earlier parole decision and order today's extraordinary hearing before the public. If uh, you turn Gertrude Banaszewski loose, you might as well put me in prison because I would be in prison in my own home for afraid to go anywhere by myself again. Banaszewski told the parole board she's a born-again Christian. She burst into tears when asked to talk about her crime. I can't even do it, and I'm sorry. That's all I can say. And uh, I ask him to forgive me. That's all I can tell you. Once again, the board voted three to two to let Banaszewski go. The bottom line, you cannot bring someone who is dead and gone back to life. And I wouldn't be a member of this board if I didn't believe people could change. Banaszewski will be released soon as she already has a place to stay, a new job, and a new identity so she can try to lead a normal life. Edie Magnus, ABC News, Indianapolis. When 16-year-old Sylvia Likens was tortured to death by members of the Banaszewski family with whom the child was staying while her parents worked with a traveling carnival. When the case broke, Paul Page was our anchorman and the late Bob Hoover, our street reporter. The following is an excerpt from a 1965 newscast in which Bob Hoover spoke with Richard Hobb, who explained what he did to the girl. All I did was write out that thing on her stomach, and then I hit her about 10 or 15 times. But How come? Well, most because the girl he told me to. Hoover then spoke to one of the Banachevsky children, who told him how the victim was treated. She refused food. We tried to get her soup every once in a while, and stuff like that, and she wouldn't take it. Well, how about these scratch marks on her stomach? Who put them on her? I did. Why? Well, Gertie just thought of it. She says since you branded us, we're going to brand you. So she itched in with a pen, and I went over it. She showed me how to do it, and then I went over it. I, I did it. Did you ever use any hot irons on her? No. Yeah, I, that three on her stomach, I did half of that. Mm -hmm. Shirley Ann did the other half. Where'd the S come from? What do you mean? There's a big S branded on her stomach, right? That's, what, one of her breath. Huh? That's what I'm talking about. Well, that's what you're talking about. Well, how about the inscription on there, I'm a prostitute and proud of it. Who put that on? I did. Did you scratch it on there, paint it on there? How'd you do it? Well, like I said before, Gertie wrote it down there with a pen, and I did the rest. Mm -hmm. She showed me how to do it. And had Gertie abused this girl? Yeah. Gertrude Banachevsky, however, had a different story. I did never beat that girl. Never. She was beat up on by other girls. In fact, my own daughter stopped her in the jaw and broke her wrist. And uh, so, I mean, there you go. And, and, and girls around the neighborhood beat her up, bloodied her nose. I, one girl broke her nose, in fact, I think. Were you ever in contact with the police on any of these occasions? Well, in the last two weeks, uh, in fact, um, uh, I think if, if you talk to my daughters, I, I'd ask them that uh, the, the children's father and I are divorced. And he's a policeman in Beach Grover was. And uh, I've asked the girls repeatedly, call their dad, and ask them what to do. And in fact, I, I asked Jenny, I said, Jenny, and, and I told Sylvia, I said, Sylvia, I'm going to have to call the police or somebody because I can't have any responsibility. But the police were called only one time, and according to Hobb... Well, she, uh, she, I come in in about, she come up from the basement, and we noticed she was cold and everything, so we carried her upstairs, give her a warm bath and artificial respiration. When, well, she stopped breathing. See, we gave her a warm bath, and then she stopped breathing. So I gave her artificial respiration for about 10 minutes, and then uh, I went and called the police. By the time police found the girl, she had been dead some 8 to 12 hours. Gertrude served 20 years of that sentence. She was released on parole in 1985. 
Before she died, five years later, she took responsibility for everything that had happened. return to the carnival. The one place I always felt safe. Reverend Bill used to say, with every situation, God always has a plan. I guess I'm still trying to figure out what that plan was. <laughs> 